Alrighty folks, this is the Sony ZV-1 uh, with an aperture 1.8 to 2.8 variable aperture kind of a lens and uh, you get a 9.4 millimeter to 25.7 millimeter kind of zoom. Now this converts into kind of 24 to 70 uh, when you compare that one inch sensor to a full frame format. Also this time Sony has done something really really different in this whole camera and you're going to see uh, right now. The cold shoe mount has taken the place of a viewfinder so there is no viewfinder on this and they have added this huge microphone that is underneath that grill um, and this is one of those best microphones that I've ever seen that has been made by kind of any other company that is native or built-in apart from that the Sony has also included a very important button which is the C1 button out here with the press of which you can actually quickly have a defocused background now the shutter speed jumps a little bit but that's again you know if you want to do it like if you want the com the camera to decide about it also inside the box you're going to see this uh, wind fur or the dead cat fur uh, which actually blocks any sort of wind muffling noise that you get on audio due to high winds and uh, they have also added this tiny tiny grip on that left hand corner that is elevated that allows you to grip the camera a little bit more better than those old school rx hundreds on the back also you're going to see a little bit kind of a raised kind of a finger grip that actually helps when you are tilting the screen and uh, man when we come to the screen this screen is the screen that we had been waiting for by Sony for a long long time this is a fully articulating three inch touch screen but the touch screen feature only works due to when you are doing auto focusing and stuff like that all around um, when you turn the camera a little bit on the right you'll see that there is a microphone jack HDMI and a multi port which means that you can charge the camera on the go while you're vlogging and it, you can you can forget about buying extra batteries now let's quickly dive in and see what else we have Howdy folks uh, ZV-1 uh, there are multiple switches as you will see right now uh, so basically um, this is a custom switch uh, and the function of this uh, switch is to quickly access uh, the focus defocus kind of section uh, what do I mean by that well I'm going to demonstrate to you later on and uh, at first I'm going to run you through all the switches on the top your on and off switches at the top left hand corner to this very big microphone section uh, the mode switch is out here actually you can change the sensitivity of this zoom button so you can do a slow and a fast or a responsive kind of zoom uh, basically what happens is that to turn on the camera you do not need to press the on and off button um, you actually can uh, take off the LCD and the camera actually turns on um, there is a little bit of problem with the manual focus system so manual focus is not going to be out here it's actually located somewhere else and I'm going to show you where the manual focus is located and how you can do manual focus on a camera like this um, also it's a fully articulating screen as you would see right now uh, that the screen is fully articulating and you can toggle this uh, whichever way you want and that is the reason uh, this camera is making getting very popular and I picked up because sometimes I do not want to carry my black magic and uh, I do want to get that same aperture 1.8 that's where uh, the Sony kicks in also if you would notice very very carefully um, this grip actually comes in very very handy so for example you can actually hold this with just the way help of your arm and this tiny red light turns on whenever you are recording any sort of video so if you press the video button uh, the red light turns on. so the Sony usual function button is out here menu is out here the scroll wheel um, and a custom button and also a delete button and a slideshow button here comes um, the display uh, and the display again is uh, as we all know that Sony's displays are always uh, or their functions are always overwhelming uh, you do have a touchscreen experience and you can uh, use this touchscreen for touch focus or you can do as uh, you know tracking options also 
So um, you might be asking that that's what's with uh, manual focus and how will I do manual focus. So well I'm including the manual focus guide because uh, a lot of us uh, content creators we do love manual focus. If you are planning to do a focus pull on this camera um, well it's not going to happen to be honest. Uh, I still think um, AFC or uh, autofocus continuous is still the best way uh, to do but uh, if you can if you want you can go out here the same uh, just by pressing the function key and uh, you can take advantage of different type of autofocusing. I think in one of my Sony A6400s I did talk you about zone autofocus. Zone autofocus is very very intuitive and I love zone autofocusing a lot. Uh, for me I always follow the rule of thirds and I always keep it on this side. If you want to do it you can do it like that. If not you if you are serious about manual focus you can go for uh, manual focus now um, watch this so in manual focus you are going to use the scroll wheel so I'm going to try to focus on this subject so for set focus I have to click the center button at first and then I can get out which is like kind of kind of I mean like it's it's kind of hard to be honest you know like it kind it's kind of hard to be honest and uh, you have to change focus like this and then that this is how you are pulling focus now but this camera was not meant for uh, manual focus to be very very uh, you know like uh, precise this is meant for autofocus uh, i wish there was a you know like a small manual focus ring that would have uh, made a lot of value for 750 but i can totally understand sony wants you to purchase the rx100 for that uh, it has a built-in nd filter uh, i think it's an nd3 or th it actually does three stops of light so that is without nd filter this is with the nd filter so built-in nd filter folks how how cool is that that sometimes on point and shoot cameras with a very very low aperture like 1.8 or very very large aperture like 1.8 I do not care about the tilting screen or anything but a built-in ND filter is what I was looking for. Saved you around about like 50 bucks. Um, there are some videos coming up and I'm going to demonstrate you uh, with some voiceover how this ND filter looks like in a practical life. And this is how it looks without an ND filter. Right now the exposure is everywhere. I'm shooting at aperture 1.8. Watch this difference. ND is now on, right? And you will see instantly there is a lot of difference in this video. Alrighty, shooting at 4K at 30 FPS, um, my ISO is 1000, I think it's a little bit overexposed because it's showing me plus 2. Um, the reason or the purpose of this video is that we are going to see low light situation. We are actually going to my friend's house. So this is aperture 1.8, ISO 640, um, 1 by 125 is the shutter speed. Um, pretty low light kind of a condition because um, this is round about like... 8 11 so it's like 8 o'clock in the evening pretty decent does an amazing job in bokeh and everything and i'm pretty li i'm loving this a lot to be very honest especially that red light on the top actually helps this is at iso 4000 and uh, in tracking it's doing an amazing job folks uh, shutter speed is 1 by 60 again 4k at 30 there's a little bit crop um, i wish it was a little bit more wider in 4k uh, but the sensor is doing an amazing job and this is what sort of low light situations we should consider rather than you know going extreme low light but then again we are going to do another test on the ISO 12800 and we are going to see how that ISO 12800 works a little bit of stabilization test while we are going out and our first food today is going to be out here I've, ISO is 10,000 on this it's losing focus um, I'm just going to try to tap and autofocus again. So the focus hunting actually begins at this ISO because it's a very high ISO. Alright folks, that's it from the channel Techadoo. Uh, that was all for the review for the Sony ZV-1. We did some videos, we also showed you what it lacked. Uh, this is my one of my favorite cameras, um, but the way uh, this guy is performing and the way it is holding on to those highlights, built-in ND filter, so that I don't have to put NDs on this because I put NDs when these lights run on the side. I think this is the best bang for the buck, to be honest, you know, like, and I am kind of shocked that 750 bucks, you get that 1.8 aperture lens at uh, round about, um, you know, 9.4 to 25.7, uh, you know, focal length. Um, there is a very little kind of lens. Actually, there is lenses like this are going to be pretty, pretty rare uh, to even, you know, look around. 
So I'm pretty impressed. Um, leave your thoughts down below and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this extensive review where I went through a lot of stuff to cover a lot of perspective. So take care. See you guys on another episode. By the way, if you want to purchase the camera, there will be links in the description below. Banggood, I did not know about that folks right now. I'm going to put Banggood and affiliate links so you guys can purchase from either places.